Hi, I'm Emily Bryant of Stonehouse Mountain Mapping, and I'm here today at the Upper Valley Land Trust Lunch and Learn Program to tell you a little bit about LIDAR. LIDAR is imagery, uh, in this case of the Earth, that has become available for our area uh, in the past decade or so. And it can give um, a whole new insight into what's going on on our land. Before we start with the slideshow, I'd like to give special recognition to our guests here, uh, in particular Dobbin and Buffalo Bill, Jock, Teddy, Octavia, Panda, Teddy, and Kitty. So I'm calling this Using LIDAR to Learn the Truth About Your Land, um, and I'd like to acknowledge Steve Alden of the Lyme Historians for contributing to this um, presentation. So as an outline, um, first of all, we'll talk about why property owners and managers might care about LIDAR, and then a little more about what LIDAR is, what you can see with it, and then um, give you an opportunity to uh, take a look at LIDAR of you know, Upper Valley Land Trust Smith Pond Shaker Forest and see what you can see. And then I'll give you some information on access to LIDAR for New Hampshire and Vermont. So why should um, property owners and managers care about LIDAR? Well, you can learn more about your land. If, if we think about my land in Orford, for instance, um, how have we gotten information about land uh, up till now? You can go out in the field and just take a look around. Here's a stone wall, here's a forested wetland. Or you could uh, look at other sources of information like a topographic map on the left or an air photo or you could take your GPS out and see where you are and where different features on the land are. You could use local historic knowledge. Here's a historic map showing that Mr. Tuttle used to live where I am now and on the right you have a, an old air photo that shows where the fields were at that point. So what, what more would you want? And uh, LIDAR can add elevation information to what you have. So on the left, we have the satellite photo again. And on the right, you'll see that there's a LIDAR hillshade image. When you're looking at the satellite photo, um, you, see, you can see where the forest is and the fields and so on. But you don't see quite so much as you would on the LIDAR about where the hills are. There's quite a ridge here, and there's some other features going on here, and a little hill here. So what is LIDAR anyway? Um, it's really detailed elevation data, that's all. It stands for light detection and ranging. Um, it's sort of like the same acronym they used to do radar, except now we're using light instead of radio waves. LIDAR uses uh, light to determine the elevation of the ground to about plus or minus eight inches. And it does this for a grid uh, about with pixels that are about two and a half by two and a half feet in size. So this grid of numbers is called a digital elevation uh, model or a DEM. And it's not a photo, it's just a model, it's a bunch of numbers. So if we look at a little piece of my land, um, just 17 and a half by 17 and a half feet um, and see what the LIDAR DEM looks like. Um, here's the grid of numbers, 26.3, 26.6 and so on, 32.4. What that is is the elevation of that piece of land in feet. So each cell contains the elevation in feet for a 2.5 foot by 2.5 foot area and it's just a bunch of numbers. What might be a little bit better to uh, get an idea of what's going on is to take that grid of numbers, run it into a computer, tell a computer lower elevations are supposed to be dark, higher elevations are supposed to be light. And all of a sudden this becomes something that you can interpret visually instead of just looking at numbers. You can sort of tell that the high point is over here. And if you wanted to, you could take the number of the high point and subtract the number of the low point 
and come up with how tall the hill is. If we took that same idea of a grayscale and just show a larger area on the ground, um, this is what we come up with. You'll see that over here it must be kind of higher hill, here's a hill, here's kind of a valley going on here, and here are these other features. Now, even better, if you take that digital elevation model and tell a computer to say, what would this terrain look like if it was illuminated, say, from the northwest? All of a sudden, you get these details are highlighted as to what's going on. And just as you can tell a computer to please illuminate from the northwest, you could say, let's illuminate from the northeast. And different things sometimes show up when you change the illumination angle. For instance, this little bit here doesn't, isn't as prominent as it is over there. So how do they create LiDAR DEMs? Well, the data is gathered um, with an airborne instrument, and a pulse of light is emitted downward from the plane, and then uh, it reflects off the Earth and comes back again. It takes a very short amount of time to, for light to travel down to the Earth and be reflected back, but the instrument records how much time, and um, it can convert that time it took to go down and back into the distance it went to go down and back. Okay, here's quiz number one. If it takes more time from the plane to the ground and back, this means... Choose one. The ground elevation is lower. The ground elevation is higher. Both. Neither. All of the above. Yes, Panda? I think the ground elevation is lower. Well, let's see what happens. Ah, here's the answer. You are right. Good job, Panda. The ground elevation is lower because if it took longer and the plane is at the same elevation, then... It, the ground must be uh, lower down. Now, one thing that's interesting about LIDAR, particularly interesting, is some forms of LIDAR imagery called bare earth imagery can see through the forest to the ground. So the things that are underneath the forest become kind of visible. So how in the world can this happen? The LIDAR s sends a light beam or laser beam down from the plane and some of the light reflects back up to the plane from the top of the forest. Some of it might go through partway and reflect off bushes or undergrowth. And then uh, some of it will go all the way down to the ground and return to the plane. And there, there isn't anything that can go underground because the light doesn't go through the ground. Um, and so, for instance, Millard the Mole is going to be totally in the dark because his hole is underground. That last, the, uh, this, this beam that comes down here, we're calling it Larry. This is Franny, this is Mary, this is Larry. It's the one that goes all the way down to the ground. And you'd say, when I look down from a plane, I can't see the ground. So, does the light get down to the ground? But... If you stop and think about it, when you're walking in the forest, it's not totally pitch black. So here's an example with Larry coming all the way through the forest. And then once he comes down, he can go back up the same way he came. Okay, here's quiz number two. Who gets back to the plane last? Franny, Mary, or Larry? Or Millard the Mole? Or, this isn't a race, we all get prizes. Yes, Teddy? Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think that it's, it's, it's Larry that gets back to the plane last. Well, let's see, Teddy. Oh, you're, you, you folks are really paying attention. This is great. Who gets back to the plane last? Well, you see, Larry has to go all the way down to the ground and all the way back again, which is farther than Franny or Mary has to go. 
So he gets back to the ground last. So if you want to see through the forest and make a bare earth BEM, you throw out the first reflections that come from the laser beam pulse, throw, the, throw out first Franny, throw out middle Mary, and just keep the last um, pulses that return. And if you keep take all those last uh, reflections and put them in a grid, then, then you'll be just keeping uh, track of what's going on on the ground and not on the top of the forest. So who is it who makes LIDAR DEMs? Um, I, my understanding, at least for the projects for Vermont and New Hampshire, the U.S. Geological Survey contracts the LIDAR projects and a private company flies the instrument and the state and others um, pay the funds for it. So what can you see with this LIDAR data? We saw a little bit before, but um, in particular, um, you can see some details under the forest cover with this bare earth DEM that you might miss otherwise. And you can see some big landscape features and some fine detail because of the small pixel sizes and the uh, resolution of the elevation information to improve the precision of existing maps. Things you might see under the forest cover um, would be cellar holes, stone walls, small wetlands, trails and roads, and stream courses. And we'll give you examples of these here. So here's a cellar hole that I walked right by this summer, but it turns out that um, it's quite a, a cellar hole right there. Uh, this is the same cellar hole in the um, non-snow time. Here's um, an air photo and the LiDAR hillshade imagery of that same cellar hole. Here's the Appalachian Trail going by. You can't really see anything going on in the air photo, but it's quite prominent in the LiDAR hillshade imagery because it's seen through the forest. Here's uh, some more examples of cellar holes. They're kind of the dimples that you see um, on those LiDAR imagery. Um, stone walls. Um, examples of stone walls. Sometimes if you change the illumination direction, a stone wall will show up better or worse. Here's an example of a wooded wetland. Um, this area right here that looks kind of flat, that's the, what's going on there. Trails and roads. Here's examples of trails and roads of various sizes. We have the Appalachian Trail here, a snowmobile trail, um, a class six, or in Vermont you'd call it class four road. Um, and uh, here you'd have a regular old dirt road and then a state highway. You can also sometimes find a stream course that might not be obvious otherwise. Here we have the forest and uh, the stream. It's a small stream in the forest with the illumination in different directions. So other, in addition to having um, features under the forest become visible in a way, you can also kind of step back. And in this case, we're looking at the whole town of Orford. Uh, and on the right is the LIDAR hillshade imagery. And you can see here's Mount Cube and Cottonstone Mountain and various other features going on, a pond and so on. If we take a little closer look up, you can uh, see a little bit better. You've got some, you can just sort of, sort of see general texture going on where higher up on the hills, it's a rougher texture down in the valleys. It's smoother. I don't know whether that's the um, sediment running off the mountains or whatever. You can also see the Connecticut River here, and you can see where previous meanders um, changed um, as the river changed. Um, some larger wetlands are visible. There's one, and there's one. And you can also see, I think this 
probably was sand originally and then it's been eroded away. And one last thing, I keep looking at these little lines that seem to all go in the same direction and wonder whether that's evidence of the glacier coming sort of from the northwest to the southeast. So uh, LIDAR also has detail that can improve precision of um, existing information. Uh, this is one spot in Orford. On the left we have the topographic map and um, topographic maps are great for the purpose um, and accurate for their scale. If you look at the very same place with LIDAR imagery that has a little more resolution, you can see that the, the stream here, the blue line, is what the state GIS data um, makes available. But you can tell that really you'd kind of like to adjust that if you want more detail. Um, and that's what I've done over here is to adjust the route of the stream according to the LIDAR. Another thing you might be able to use LIDAR for is um, to get an idea of property boundaries. Um, I don't know about deeds for any land you're involved with, but for mine, it's really pretty crude. It says, um, running westerly on the southerly line of said Horton's land to land formerly and so on like that. It just says who owns it. It doesn't say um, what uh, orientation or distance or uh, any of that kind of nice detailed information. But if you look at the LIDAR data, you might say to yourself, well, here's stone walls. That'll give me a hint of what where the... Uh, property boundaries are. But note that, um, as I say down here, LIDAR is no substitute for a deed or a survey, um, but it might just give you a practical help on uh, locating the land. Okay, here's quiz number three. In this LIDAR hillshade image, there are at least how many cellar holes? Yes, Jock? I think, I, I think I see three. Uh, well, yes, Jock, um, there are three. There are at least three. Here's one, two, three. And it turns out that this is also one over here. And um, let's see if you can tell the difference between a trail and a road. What would you say, Buffalo Bill? If I were on a trail, would I be going north or south, east or west, or going crazy? <laughs> uh, 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 buffaloes, buffaloes always go north and south, so I'll choose A. Very good, Buffalo Bill. If you look at this uh, smaller feature, that's the Appalachian Trail, this is a rather large woods road. So here are the answers. We saw that there's four cellar holes and the trail will be going north or south. Oops. You all, you passed all three quizzes and you've earned your unofficial LIDAR expert degree. So what have we said so far? Why should property owners and managers care about LIDAR? It can complement existing information. What is it? LIDAR uses reflected light to create detailed elevation models. What can you see? You can see details like stone walls under the forest, and you can also see some big uh, landscape features like hills or old river meanders. So now, now it's your turn. Um, we're going to take a look at the Upper Valley Land Trust Smith Pond Shaker Forest. This is a property that is in Enfield and it's just south of Mascoma Lake. So, um, and I'll give you some background. Here's a historic map from 1892. Here are the Shaker villages. Notice it says canal and canal there. That's kind of interesting. And up here, there are um, 
it, it says shakers, it's sort of up in the uplands. Here's the uh, lake and it goes up high and goes down again. Um, and there's also this road with uh, right angles. So these are some things you might want to look for. On the left, I have a topographic map of the area. You can see that it's high here and goes down to the lake. Here's the air photo of the same area. And I don't know whether you can see it, but there's quite a few logging roads there. So um, you should be able to, I hope, uh, download a PDF file showing this uh, LIDAR image of uh, the Smith Pond Shaker Forest and be able to zoom in and get a little more detail. Um, and when you do that, um, you should be able to locate possibly cellar holes, stone walls, canals, roads and trails, streams, wetlands, glacial trends. Now I'm looking at the northern part of this um, forest and just to give an example of some of the things that I found there. I don't know what you found, but we've got three cellar holes, possible cellar holes. I haven't been there. I don't know for sure. A lot of stone walls in pink. The orange would be some of those logging roads and the canals are in this light green color. And one thing that's interesting is that uh, if you follow the profile of the canals and a profile is another thing you can do with a digital elevation model if you have the right computer software. The profile of the canals is always going downhill. Even this thing is going down into the valley and then down out of the valley and so on. The yellow lines are again sort of this, uh, these glacial trends, sort of like we saw in the um, LIDAR image of Orford. And um, as much as I love to look at LIDAR and try and figure out what's going on, um, you have to note that just because you think you saw a cellar hole or wetland or something interesting on somebody's property doesn't mean that they want you on there looking for it. So you should respect the landowner's properties. And the other thing is LIDAR data are acquired at one point in time. So... Um, Bear that in mind. Things might have changed since then if there was a flood and a stream changed or a gravel pit was active. And also your interpretation of what a LIDAR feature is isn't the same as a survey or a legal opinion. Online access to LIDAR, uh, both New Hampshire and Vermont have that. New Hampshire, you can use Granite View um, and you can also look at the Stonewall Mapper um, the Stonewall Mapper has an uh, option to look at LiDAR with illumination from two different directions. Um, and here's an example of Granite View. Here's an example of the Stonewall Mapper with the stone walls in pink. It's kind of crowdsourced. It's an ongoing project. In Vermont, the, the Vermont Interactive Map Viewer um, is available and similarly you can see LIDAR. This is an example of that. If you want to look at a video about LIDAR, here's the URL for that. And thank you. Thank you all for your kind attention. <laughs>